Good morning, Valley Mills Christian Church. This is Joe McNeil, and this is your Wednesday in the Word and your 11 a.m. prayer time. I want to share with you this morning, um, quite frankly, because I'm struggling a little bit, and I think a lot of us are, whether it's from depression or fear or anxiety. You know, we were dealing with the coronavirus and being sheltered in place, and as restrictions were being lifted and we're still dealing a little bit with the corona, we see a horrible incident of police brutality, which has led to unrest, more deaths, destruction, rioting, protests, all these things. And it seems like 2020 is one hit after another, one horrible chain of events after another. Whether they're related or not, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. But it just seems bad, and it's hard, because I'm the kind of person that really wants to fix problems and to make people feel better, and it's hard when I can't do that in a situation. But the one thing I can do the one thing that I'm encouraging you this morning to do now, before you decide to do anything, is pray. Get in your Bible, look for encouragement, and pray. Pray, pray, pray. I can't stress that enough. Before you log on to your Facebook to find out what people are saying and how you're going to respond to it, pray. When you're sitting in bed and you're depressed and you're worried about the situation, crack open that Bible, find some encouragement, and pray. And that's what this 11 a.m. prayer time is for. I hope that we can all rally together, pray together this morning, and really seek God. But first I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 26. And uh, this is for, uh, verse 47 through 56, Jesus arrested. So as you're turning to Matthew 26, if you're doing that, I just want to encourage you once again that the first thing that we should always do in every circumstance, whether we it's something we can control or something that we can't, is we should pray. That should always be our first response to everything. Now, while, we, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him, was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. And with that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion? That you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me. Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled, and that all the disciples deserted him and fled. What's happening in our country and in the world right now is nothing new. It's nothing new to God, and it's nothing new to our planet. Unrest has happened before. Plagues have happened before. Pandemics have happened before. Divisiveness has happened before. A country at odds with each other has happened before. This has all happened before. And sometimes you hear Christians say things like, it's all happening for a reason, and maybe they draw this passage of scripture as inspiration for saying stuff like that, that, that God has a plan and it all happens for a reason. And I don't know if I necessarily prescribe to that. I don't think everything happens for a reason. Sometimes bad stuff happens and that's just the way it is. We live in a fallen world and unfortunately sin is still rampant. Until the day that Jesus returns, this is the story of the human race. A people struggling. And I want to pay attention to a couple things here before we enter prayer. First, pay attention to the rebuke. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus says. 
He doesn't want his disciples to, to fight, to lead some kind of destructive combat. This isn't what he's been preaching for the last three years about peace and love and unity. He tells him to put it away. He rebukes one of his followers because that's not the way. And as angry as you might be about this situation, that's never the answer. Now, he also says that he can command legions of angels. If he calls on his father, his father in heaven, our father in heaven, will send legions of angels to do whatever is necessary. And I do believe that that still happens today, that there are angels around us. There's a spiritual realm that exists on top of this one. And scripture tells us that, that our war is not with flesh. It's with rulers and principalities of darkness and things that happen behind the scenes of the normal world. And our main force for good and for combat in these situations is our Father in heaven, his legions of angels, and we get there when we pray. Jesus says, I can call out to my Father. And that's what prayer is all about, communing with God. And that's why it's important. Because as much as Jesus could have instructed his disciples to attack the people that were coming to arrest him, he didn't. He said, and even now, like, I don't need your sword. I can call on my Father in heaven. He can send angels to help us. But he knew that this stuff had to happen in order to fulfill prophecy, in order to fulfill what was said about him. And so sometimes, sometimes this bad stuff does happen for a reason. And I know I said that I don't think it happens every time like that, but I think sometimes it does. And Jesus knew that this time in particular it did. So maybe we need to look at the events right now and see what's happening. I want to ask you a question. It is what you're listening to, is what you are hearing, causing you to be divided or causing you to be more united with people? Think about that. The actions that you're doing, the things that you're posting on Facebook, the, the conversations that you're having with people, are they promoting unity and peace and love? Or are they promoting division? Are you looking for arguments? Because I tell you this, that if you're looking for arguments and you're looking for division, you're doing the enemy's work for him. And that's just how that is. I want to lead us in prayer here now. And I know this video is a little bit long, and I hope that you give it some thought and some listen. But this is something I think we're all struggling with right now. But I firmly believe that when two or more are gathered, whether it's online or in person, God is going to hear that. He's going to be there. And God can be in this situation. Right now we need him in this situation. Pray with me, please. Earnestly, wholeheartedly, with all of your might, all of your strength, and all of your understanding, please pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, God, we just lift all of this up to you. God, we know that it's horrible out there right now. And we feel bad for the people who have lost loved ones. We feel bad for people that uh, are dying in the streets from these protests. We, we feel bad for people that are dying from the coronavirus. And God, we can't do anything to fix that situation, but you can. And God, you know all, you see all, and you love us so much, God, that we call on you as our Father. God, we need help. Help us, Lord. Please, Lord Jesus, we just pray, God, for peace and understanding that these civil unrests would stop, that this virus would stop. God, that we could go back and get together as people. God, we know that you have created us as a people for community. And we pray that our actions are not dividing people, that, that we're uniting people. And God, we may disagree fundamentally with some other people, some of our friends, some of the people that we see on social media. God, but we can get together and we can pray. God, we can, we can send our, our sympathy, our hearts, our love to people. And God, charge us, fill us with your Holy Spirit, God, just to, to be able to do the good works that you want us to do. Help us to put ourselves aside in this situation. It's not about us, God. All of these injustices and all of this 
the sadness and sorrow and depression and anger, frustration. God, it's not about us. We as a human race, we know that we're fallen and we need you. We need you, Jesus, to cover our sins and to make us complete and whole. God, we can't do it on our own. Everything good that we have comes from you. And God, we just pray for goodness right now. We pray for the leaders of this country uh, in all assets, in all aspects. God, we just pray that you would be with them and, and help them to do the right thing. God, be with the police and the people that are out there protesting. Keep them all safe. God, we just want your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God, we don't have all the answers, but we know that you do. And we just pray right now with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our strengths. God, we just pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just move in a mighty way. God, let there be a revival across this country that people would wake up and understand, God, that they need you. God, that we are nothing without you. God, help us to make you the most important parts of our lives and help us to always go to prayer anytime that we're struggling with anything. God, that you would be the first person, the first thing, the first idea in our head would be to go to you. God, I'm not an eloquent speaker and I'm not someone who can affect great change, but God, if there's anything that I can do or anything that we listening can can do, God, use us for that. Whatever we can do, whatever good we can do to promote unity and love and turning our hearts back to you, God, help us to do that. Help us to put ourselves aside and do what you want us to do. God, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. I really, really hope that this ends soon, but I hope that you continue to pray with me. I'm going to be praying like crazy, and I hope that you are too. God bless.